Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Letitia Wallace begins now. Good evening. First tonight, Tasmania's travel voucher scheme has been extended until the end of October after it was revealed less than half have actually been spent. The move has been welcomed by tourism operators, but some have flagged they will need additional support if the state's borders don't open in time for summer. A new business faces challenges at the best of times. The brew hop opened just six months before the pandemic struck. We were really just starting to sort of hit our stride early last year when everything kicked off the first time. Offering tours around Tasmanian breweries and distilleries, but the government's travel voucher scheme has seen a handful of locals jump on board. Obviously helps spread awareness and a few people are you know, Googling and searching businesses and ways to use their vouchers, but not as many as I would have hoped so far. With the deadline for the $7.5 million program approaching next Friday, it's been revealed less than half of the 25,000 allocated have been redeemed. 7,500 vouchers have already been claimed. We know that there is a lag when it comes to redemption of vouchers. The state government making the call to provide an extension. So that the vouchers are able to be used till the end of October. In time for the school holidays, a move welcomed by tourism operators. It's been really integral to have that volume of business through so we can make sure we keep staff in jobs going through and being ready for when borders do reopen. The Premier has set a target to have 90% of Tasmanians vaccinated by December 1, giving many hope our borders could be open in time for summer. But there are warnings additional support will be required if that doesn't happen. As it's proven to us in the last 18 months, it isn't linear, um, it doesn't do what you think it will. So if there is a circumstance in the next three and a half months, then yes, we would be calling for the government to uh, look at other ways of supporting the industry. For now, it's hopes the extension will provide businesses with a much needed boost. And this gives them a chance to utilise it, whether it be for me or other tourism providers, that like we're all doing it pretty tough at the moment. Next signs, 7 Tasmania News. A Ralton man has died after being struck by a firework at a Birrelly property overnight. Attempts to resuscitate him at the scene were unsuccessful. Police say the man in his 50s was trying to light the firework when it was struck his chest and shoulder during the explosion. Around 100 people were at the property for a party. No one else was injured. Hobartians have embraced new mask-wearing rules at the Salamanca market. From today, masks are required at all events with more than 1,000 people. It didn't deter Tasmanians from attending the market, turning out in droves to support local storeholders. Disposable masks were available at the entrance, while many opted to bring their own. Police have clashed with anti-lockdown protesters in both Melbourne and Sydney today as more COVID cases were recorded in those states. Police turning Melbourne CBD into a fortress in a bid to stop the demonstrations. A charging wall of protesters was sprayed while an officer was knocked to the ground. It comes as 535 new cases of COVID were reported in Victoria. Residents also taking to the streets in Sydney to voice their opposition to government restrictions. New South Wales recorded another 1,331 cases and six deaths. A popular charity art show has returned for its 32nd consecutive year. Hosted by the Rotary Club of Hobart, more than 350 pieces are on display at Rest Point this weekend. Money raised during the exhibition will go back to the artists and towards Rotary's charity projects. One great thing about this particular show is it gives people who might otherwise not have a place to show their works via a gallery or something the chance to actually sell some works uh, in an environment where there is a lot of interest. The art show wraps up tomorrow. Sandy Bay Sailing Club hoisted their sails this morning to officially open its new season. The club also making a push for female members as part of its goal to have equal gender representation by 2025. Committee members say the plan is already having an impact. It has been a huge change just in the way people operate at a committee meeting. Um, people's behaviours change, it's more family friendly. The club also announcing it's received state government funding to construct new storage sheds. Tasmania's doll enthusiasts have gathered today for the annual Hobart Doll Show. More than 100 exhibits were on display ranging from modern to antique through to reborn designs. Organisers say the event leaves a lasting impact on it gets creators. It's competitive because if someone makes one particular baby doll, or well, the doll studios we have in Hobart, uh, Launceston and Burnie, you find there's another whole ten of them next year do that same doll. 
The event wraps up tomorrow afternoon. Locally, the North West Football League trophy is back in black and white hands. Devonport stood tall in the wet at La Trobe, ending a three-decade premiership drought after pushing Penguin aside by just three points. The burden of a barren trophy cabinet can haunt teams on this grand stage, so the pressure was on both Devonport and Penguin, sides whose silverware has been equally as scarce since the 80s. A capacity crowd of 5,000 prepared to scream through their masks, desperate to be the first in a generation to witness their club's colours on the cup. Early on, the two Blues breathed easy as their superstar forward and the league's leading goal kicker Jack Templeton kicked truly. But Penguins' fortunes would change with the weather. A downpour reduced skills and scoring to the floor before the bitter cold switched to bitterness. <laughs> Players were locked in far more than just an arm wrestle. Play may have continued, but the focus and ferocity lay on the grandstand side. <laughs> Devonport's Jacob Marshall was yellow carded only to return minutes later to two Blues boos. The sun shone on Devonport in the second term as Luke Keep thread the needle from a tight angle. Bain and Lowe added to the tally minutes later, snapping around the body to bring in the cheers. A brilliant smother showed Penguins' will to win, but a strong mark from Ben Blacklow started a string of black and white play as Joey Chaplin emerged from the pack to pull down the pill, his kick inspiring a grandstand rendition of his nickname. <laughs> Trailing by 11 at the main break, Penguins showed desperation, but the rewards weren't coming as the behinds tally cast a growing shadow over their solitary goal. Despite the rain, Bain and Lowe's compass still pointed to the big sticks as he slotted his second. By now, Penguin was in deep trouble. Jack Templeton's wayward kick and subsequent 50-metre penalty best summed up the mood. And when Brady Squires converted from a free kick, the emotion became overwhelming. Whatever Penguins leaders said in the final huddle, it resonated as the side came to within a kick of clutching a comeback victory. But for the first time in decades, Devonport would be crowned Coastal Kings. Those last two losing grand finals now firmly in the past. And in the Southern Football League grand final, minor premier Signet has come from behind to defeat the Hugh and Bill Lions at North Hobart Oval to win its first premiership since 2004. The Lions dominated early to lead by 18 points at half time before the Port stormed home with an eight goals to two second half. On the final day of the Tasmanian football season, these two clubs were desperate for glory. The match tight early on, the Lions taking seven minutes to score the first goal. That sparked Hewenville into action as they race to an early three-goal lead. Can he get his turn going? It's swinging back. Brock has one and the Lions are roaring here at North Hobart. A late Signet Major, however, had them behind by just 10 at the first change. Conditions getting slippery in the second, as Gordon moved the port within a goal. Nice handball. Gordon's going to run into an open goal. Smart work! Hewenville wasted chances, but a late goal gave them some breathing space at half-time. Sneaking through is Thorpe. What a goal! Those misses coming back to bite the lines. Signet bursting out of the blocks in the Premiership quarter. Three goals in the first seven minutes, putting them level. Doreen needs to turn around. It's hit the post. Oh. Gone through for a goal. It has. A piece of individual brilliance from Dale Thorpe steadied the Hewenville ship. All square with a quarter to play, setting up a thrilling final 25 minutes. The port striking first in the last. Is he going to have a shot from 50? He spins out of trouble, he runs in, he's got an open goal, he sends it home. Four goals to one in the final term, giving Signet a special win. Their best players standing up when it mattered. The Port overrunning the lines by 18 points. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. A framework for this year's Sydney Hobart Yacht Race will be worked out from Monday when the state government meets with race organisers. The strong take-up of vaccinations is giving hope the multi-state event can proceed along with activities on the Hobart waterfront. A final decision on the race will ultimately depend on border restrictions. Good evening. It was a top of 15 today for Hobart and Launceston and 14 degrees in Burnie and Devonport.
Meanwhile, Friendly Beach has had the warmest day in the state, reaching 17, 15 for Flinders Island and St Helens, Bushy Park 14, a high of 13 for King Island, Lowhead, Grove and Strawn, and 6 in Liawini. There was cumulus cloud across Tasmania today, and for the rest of Australia, a frontal cloud band extends over the Tasman Sea, and another can be seen over the southwest of WA. Tomorrow we'll see troughs over northern Australia and a high over South Australia, while a cold front is nearing Tasmania with strong winds to follow. For the coastal waters summary, northwesterly winds will reach up to 40 knots in the west, with a westerly swell increasing up to 7 metres there and in the south as well. A severe weather warning is current for western, northern and eastern Tasmania for damaging northwesterly winds, a gale warning for coastal waters in the southwest lakes for northwesterly winds, and a strong wind warning for all southeast inshore waters and the central plateau lakes. A warning to sheep graziers is current for all grazing districts and a flood watch for the northern river catchments. Taking a look at tomorrow's weather, if you're going out you might want to pack an umbrella. A rainy day ahead for Hobart and Richmond, both with a top of 17 and showers as well for ooze. 14 degrees and a 95% chance of rain for Launceston and similar conditions for Devonport and Deloraine. More rain for Burnies, Strawn and Curry, with temperatures in the mid-teens and rain developing in St Helens and Whitemark with a top of 15, afternoon showers for Swansea. Now to the three-day forecast, showers for the west and far south on Monday and thunderstorms on the way. Tuesday we'll see rain about the west, south and central areas and the showers continue for the west and far south on Wednesday. Interstate, 19 and a late shower or two for Melbourne tomorrow, a sunny 24 degrees for Sydney and partly cloudy in Brisbane, reaching a high of 28. And it's currently 8 degrees and cloudy in Hobart, Launceston and Devonport. That's all for now and back to you, Letitia. Thank you, Tiani. And before we leave you, there has been some breaking news. A 42-year-old woman has died in a drowning incident at Bichano. A second woman she was diving with came to her aid when she began experiencing difficulties. She was airlifted to the Royal Hobart Hospital where she sadly died. And that's all your news for now. Thanks so much for joining us.